welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I am 2.7% crow. Ka-ka, ka-ka. Wait, well, what about a pigeon? Mm, that's a little bit more. Uh, have you, uh, I don't think you know about Trash Dove, do you? Trash Dove? Yeah, it, Facebook has this, um, what you call this, stickers. And one of the ongoing popular, well, not really popular anymore, but it's, it's a sticker called Trash Dove. And it's silly. Well, now I must check this out. Yeah, you, you go do that, and I'll just let people know what we're doing for today. Um, unfortunately for us, uh, Sappy is not here. By the way, we're recording this on the day of Daylight Savings, was it? Uh, this is the weekend after Daylight Savings. Ah, yes. So, wibbly wobbly what timey wimey stuff. So anywho, on this week's episode, we are going to review Friends Forever issue 31. In this issue, Little Strongheart seeks Rainbow Dash's help in finding the legendary creature called the Rainbow Crow. Will they succeed? Will they not? Find out after the, well, review, or during the review. So anywho, Silver, have you seen the treasure dove yet? Its eye is staring right at me. <laughs> oh, you should see the Trash Duff Pony version. Honestly, I'm looking at a at an anime woman dressed up as Trash Duff. What? <laughs> Those proportions just don't... She's going to have a lot of back pain. <laughs> a lot of back pain. Uh, okay, I need to send you this then. Like, uh, Trash Duff Pony. There we go. I'll see your Trash Duff Pony and raise you an anime Trash Duff Pony woman. <laughs> okay. No, not, not pony, but trash of woman. Oh gosh. Uh, sorry, I just at home. We, we, we're just, oh, this one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> just like, oh, well, you can do, <laughs> this is the internet, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Funny enough, uh, I know the artist. Not personally, but I know the artist. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> ah. And I'll, and I'll, it, I've got you laughing already, so let me just hit you with one more. Ah, uh, please. Oh, uh, boy. Oh, this one. Come on. <laughs> Alrighty then, alrighty then. So anyway, um, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, now I'm si- trying to see what they would do with the Rainbow Crow if they tried to humanize her, but, oh, I shudder. <laughs> I shudder. Now, I, I greatly enjoyed this, uh, this issue. After, this is issue 31. So after Cadence and Twilight was not a big success in my eyes. So it was so good to see another duo just really bring their best to the table, both of them. One, the artwork in this is just beautiful. Tony Fleeks, he does a great job. He, his familiarity and confidence in drawing these characters has grown so much from his initial comics. And now that he's very close to Andy Price, amongst my favorite artists. Uh, but then there's also uh, uh, Sarah Richards' artwork for The Legend of the Rainbow Crow, which is just gorgeous. This is something I would expect to see in a museum. True. And Sarah Richards, for the most part, does cover art for the pony comics, generally. And to see her finally get some... Um, creds in the comics, in well, inside the comics, that's something new and awesome. And so getting to see that and also the tale of, of the Rainbow Crow sacrifice, uh, not only of what it gave up for others, but also the self-control it, it uh, demonstrated. Rainbow and Little Strongheart together match that discipline, but because they play off against one another so well, and that's a very critical part of any good friends forever. The two leads have to really play off one another. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and so I, I love this one. It's, it's in my top five. Wow. Th- th- that is a high number for a comic book that's going on for, well, going on for 38 issues. And that's the final chapter for friends forever. But as for this review, we are doing only 31. So five hour 31. That's not bad. Not bad at all. And as for me, this one, is one of those comics where I'm glad that I have a short retention span because rereading this comic again and discovering the story and the art is just so awesome. I, 
I really, really like Sarah Richards' art here with the legend of the Rainbow Crow. And the crow's sacrifice here is really heartwarming. Just knowing that the crow didn't have to help, but she wanted to. And the sacrifice that she did till the end where she lost her color, she lost her voice, and it made her to what crows are today. And this is interesting when it comes to folk tales and whatnot, because um, have you heard the story about the eagle and the chicken or the hawk and the chicken? Actually, I, I've not, but I can tell you the story of the coyote and fire. Oh, go ahead. Some American tribes, they have the legend that the coyote stole fire to bring it to man. And as uh, as he was escaping, his tail was... I forget if it was touched by winter or burned by fire, but it's the explanation for why the tips of a coyote's tail is a different color. And I think in some versions it's a fox and touched by winter. That's why a fox's tail is always white at the tips. Mm. Basi- basically, we use stories to try and make sense of the world. True. It's folk tales, that's one thing. Um, my story yes. was... Uh, it sounds a bit far-fetched, but... The story goes where the chicken and hawk were good friends. And the chicken one day asked the hawk, um, how do you fly? We we both are um, fowls and I can fly. And the hawk says, you know what? I have this um, thread or needle and thread for you to sew. It, it sounds strange when I say it out loud, but... That's the story. So basically, so more feathers or something like that. And the chicken lost the needle. And well, from that point on, they became great enemies because the chicken lost something precious from the hawk. And now, till this day, the hawk will always hunt down the chicken. Jeez, talk about a grudge match. <laughs> I know. Uh, but there's uh, folk tales. I- I'm not sure if it's true or not, but it sounds... Eh... Yeah, what you gotta do? You're just gonna be enemies, I guess. Oh yeah, true. But what you uh, gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? <laughs> bad birds, bad birds. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, we are going to start the review on this one. So if you have not read this book, uh, we highly recommend that you do because this is a really, really good book. So anyway, we start off with Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, and also Tank. Hanging out in the clouds, just appreciating the fluffy clouds. Yay, fluffy clouds are fluffy. Super fluff. Mm -hmm. And at their current location, they're really, really high. Um, I'm guessing high above Ponyville. And I'm surprised that Fluttershy can fly that high. Well, technically, the clouds are a ground for her. True. So, I I mean, yes, as Spike once said, she's a pegasus who's afraid of heights. (laughs) Also true. So I don't know how, how much one can take that. But still, Fluttershy, when she sets her mind to it, she sets her mind to it. And while looking through the vista, they can see almost everywhere, even Appaloosa. Suddenly there's a huge black smoke coming along and, oh no, what's going on? Is Appaloosa on fire? Until they see a smoke signal of Rainbow Dash's cutie mark. And, well... You know what that means? This is a job for Sonic Rain Boom. Batman. <laughs> uh, no, um, Sonic Rain Boom away, Rainbow Dash. And this is an occurring joke that's going on where uh, Fluttershy would say, Wait, she thinks this is a job for who? She just flew away. I hope she's not mad at us. Oh, only Fluttershy. <laughs> well, only Fluttershy, eh? We'll, we'll see about that. So anyway... After Rainbow Dash dashes off to Appaloosa and see what's going on, she meets up with Little Strongheart. And so Little Strongheart was the one that sent the smoke signal to Rainbow Dash. And Rainbow Dash assumes that, hey, is this a race? Do you want to race up with me? Yes, let's go. Let's go fast. Gotta go fast. Gotta go faster, 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 faster. Although I guess I should say this on behalf of someone somewhere. Smoke signals do not work that way. <laughs> True, but this is Equestria, so a lot of things don't work that way. 
what you gotta do, you just go with the flow. True. And, well, sadly, there's no race, but Little Strong Heart tells Rainbow Dash that she needs her help. And she shows Rainbow Dash the cornfield, or the field of stuff. And Rainbow, Rainbow Dash logically says that, Are you sure you're not meant to call Applejack, or Big Mac, or even Apple Bloom? Like, they're farmers, they should know better than me. Like, I'm just a flyer here. And, well, Little Strong Heart goes to the tent and uh, let the chief... Uh, what's the chief's name? Um... Thunderhoofs? Yes, Thunderhoofs. Thunderhoof explain the whole situation. And, well, Rainbow Dash here says, like, oh, um, weather problem, alright, I'll just get in gear and bust the clouds. Although, we should point out that, uh, saying meet Chief Thunderhoofs is kind of redundant. She already done met him. Uh, yeah, true. I, I think the proper phrase would, give, uh, would be, uh, let's see Chief Thunderhoofs. But meat does sound nice. Yeah, well, whatever. What have you, what have you. Mm, true. But uh, after explaining that this is not the, that's not the thing that you should do, Rainbow Dash, sit down. I'll tell you a story, and said story is the legend of the Rainbow Crow. To summarize it, um, Silver, why, why don't you summarize it? Because I am terrible at summarizing stuff. Well, many many years ago, uh, much the terrain was much much colder, uh, snow everywhere, and the buffalo were stubborn people. They basically camped down and thought they could outweigh the winter. But uh, it just wouldn't change. Summer would not come. And so eventually they discovered the rainbow crow, this beautiful bird with all the colors of the rainbow singing a fantastic song. Uh, and its songs sort of war, uh, warmed their hearts at least. But... The chief of the tr buffalo had an idea. He asked the rainbow crow, could you take this branch and fly to the sun and bring its warmth back to thaw the land? And the crow agreed. It flew up to the sun, and the sun wasn't quite ready to just give up its bounty. So, but the crow charmed it with a song of its own, and the song was so beautiful that the sun said, sure, here you go, take some of my fire. Now, the crow did not enjoy a fun trip back down to Earth. Basically, the fire was burning her, her feathers black and the heat scorching her, her throat, basically taking away her song. If she flew too fast, uh, the, fi the fire from the sun would go out and her, her whole trip would be for nothing. If she flew too slow, it would burn her alive. And so the rainbow crow kept just the perfect speed to, to deliver the warmth of the fire back to the buffalo and thaw the land so that they could live, but not so slow that she lost her own life. However, she did sacrifice both her beauty and her song to bring them summer. Mm -hmm. And it is such a beautiful story, and the artwork here is beautiful. I highly recommend uh, reading this issue with the Comixology app because the reason why I say this is the reveal of the artwork is awesome. Like, I'm looking here through the PDF version of the book, and it shows you everything in one go, even the reveal of the crow. Like, the line, the, the last line before the reveal is, she could not sing to announce her return. She could only, ha! Kaka! Kaka! Yep. And, it, the way that the Comixology app works is it shows you panel by panel, um, word bubble by word bubble. So it shows you slowly, and once it hits the reveal, it zooms out to show you everything, which is really, really awesome. If you don't mind spending the digital uh, money for this digital book, do it, because it is really awesome. Um, but yes, uh, if you take a look see at the artwork for the Buffaloes, they look hyper... Stylized, they're almost realistic. And they are quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the Rainbow Crow's artwork is especially stunning. I got to see Sarah Richard at Pacific Pony Con Ooh. working on her artwork. She had this portable kit of all these paints, and she was just lightly brushing highlights onto this beautifully complex yet easy-to-follow art. And it's just like in this one. Just stunningly beautiful. You're lucky, man. I, I wish I can meet her and talk to her and just like, buy something from her. 
Well, I didn't get to talk to her all that much. She had to get to a panel. Ah, uh, still. But she seemed like a very, very nice person. Uh, very nice. All right. But anywho, um, so once the story is done, Rainbow Dash just says awesome and says, you want me to fly up to the sun and bring you back fire, uh, more fire. <laughs> Like, yeah, Rainbow Dash, like, yeah, uh, I, I think you're missing the point. Yeah, you didn't catch the part about where the poor crow burned? Yeah, like, there, there's fire in front of you guys. Like, there, there's a ritual and a ceremony, like, there's a thing, like, once they reach this part here, like, this is the part where the uh, lesson bomb drops. It drops that the whole book is about traditions and how some traditions are there for a reason. Tradition, tradition, brum, tradition. Mm-hmm. And ceremonies and whatnot. Like, um, like even, uh, Thunderhoof here says, uh, there is a ritual, a ceremony. Uh, the great crow lives, uh, left us many feathers, blah, 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 and so on. Like, um, like there's a ritual where burning the feather would, uh, bring in the spring thaw or something like that. So, um, <laughs> Rainbow Dash assumes that, oh, um, you want my feathers? Like, my, my feathers are not uh, rainbowish, uh, my, my manes are, but like, um, <laughs> and everybody says, no, Rainbow, like, we want you to go and meet up with the crow. And she's just amazed, like, what? She's still alive? I'm starting to think nothing actually dies in Equestria. I mean, just like, you have beans from a thousand years still popping up. Regular ponies from a thousand years still popping up. Granny Smith isn't even the oldest member of the Apple family. (laughs) Well, we do know that there is death in Equestria by that Hearts and Hooves Day song. I'm starting to wonder if that wasn't just like someone's pet guppy. (laughs) Probably. But, uh, anywho, after the talk, the chief gives Rainbow Dash a necklace, which has the offerings to the crow. And, well, Rainbow Dash says, no problem, there's nobody faster than Rainbow Dash and Little Strong Heart. And, well, Rainbow Dash and who? I mean, you assume she said Little Strong Heart, but who can say for sure they just took off? I hope they're not mad at us. Ladies and gentlemen, the Buffalo Fluttershy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was a bit disappointed near the end where we didn't get a third rendition of this joke. Well, so the rule of threes is not an absolute. I know. Sometimes less is more. I, I, I know, but like for, for for something like this, it should be a rule of three because, you, you know, uh, like this joke is not going to go beyond this comic. Like it's going to be only here. So it's like, do it three times and that will be, we'll be happy. Like, the rule of three. It's, it works for video game. It works for movies. It's awesome. If it was good enough for my video games, it's good enough for you, sonny boy. Me. Yeah. Cry. But, but anywho, um, we have our heroes, Little Strongheart and Rainbow Dash, head towards the, uh, crow's nest. <laughs> Funny enough. And once they reach to the point, here is where Rainbow Dash learns her lesson the hard way. There's reasons why things are done a certain way. And, well, they arrive at the Badlands and there's tall structures. You would assume that flying high and speeding through would be fast rather than going down to the trail, following the trails of um, caverns, twists and turns would be slow. But, um, well, it seems that Littlefoot arrived first while Rainbow Dash had trouble <laughs> with the coyotes. Yeah. Littlefoot, we're not in land before time. Little Strongheart. Oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah, Strongheart. <laughs> but this is the push-pull between Strongheart and Rainbow throughout the comic. Strongheart wants to do everything uh, by the book, but they're they're facing a very tight deadline. If they only go by the traditional way, they won't make it in time. But at the same time, traditions are there for a reason. Like, for example, the one I can clearly tell is the canyons. Following the trails is much safer um, because, well, the rock formations are full of coyotes and they will 
munch on you for snacks and whatnot. Ah, but then they get to the marshlands, which are filled with po- what looks like awful gas. They're fart gas. Don't light them. a match. <laughs> and so it's up to Rainbow to pick up little Strongheart and carry her, which is the faster way. She uh, shaves time off their travel by doing so. Mm-hmm. So it's a give and take. And with the current situation of they have to chase time while keeping tradition, like there's certain situations where I do agree with Rainbow Dash and I do agree with Strongheart. Like the canon is one good example. Um, with the Mar, uh, sorry, uh, the Marsh, was it? Marshlands? Yeah, Marshlands is something that Rainbow Dash should tackle. And with the next obstacle, which is the, uh, mountains, like, what, what was it called? What was the mountain called here? Um, the high peak mountains, very dangerous. Well, what, what do they call it? Like, do they have an official uh, name for this place? Uh, let's see here. I think they just call it the mountain range. Yeah, the mountain range. And here is where R- Rainbow Dash and uh, Strongheart get into an argument where Rainbow Dash says, like, these traditions are dumb. Like, wouldn't it be easier just to head on through solving the problem? Like, that's the fastest way. Like, the fastest way is a straight line from point A to point B. No detours and no nothing. Like, that is the most fastest and most efficient way. Strongheart says, like, you think you know everything, don't you? Like, okay, go cross the mountain. Like, do it your way. See how it goes. And at this point, like, reading this, like, oh man, they're doing it, aren't they? Like, they're fighting. Oh, man, I, I don't like this. Well, this is unfortunately Rainbow Dash's character. She excels at saying things but not really thinking about them. Speak now, regret later is yeah. her modus operandi. Yeah. And at the same time, too, like the four panels that goes through here, like Strongheart here is really, really angry at Rainbow. And Rainbow here feels guilty for it. Like, the expression that Tony drew on Rainbow Dash's face tells us that, oh, Rainbow Dash is already regretting doing so. But Rainbow just goes do her thing because, well, Rainbow is just Rainbow. So she fly across the mountain range. And, well, before we move on to the other page, the necklace snaps and leaves the offering at the mountain base where Littlefoot doesn't notice because she's closing her eyes. Hmm, all right. Well, and we got to throw in there, this is Little Strongheart. Uh, being petty. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, this is about paying back someone who doesn't respect her traditions, which sounds righteous until you realize that she needs Rainbow. Oh, true. So, so sending her the long way, the more dangerous way, is ultimately going to sabotage her own efforts. True, but it's funny. It's funny. Like, I'm not going to be mad at um, Little Strongheart here because Rainbow Dash needed the ass whooping here. She did, but I expect that uh, Chief Thunderhoves would have some uh, words for Little Strongheart later. Well, technically not really, because they shave off a lot of time crossing the marsh and whatnot. But then putting your ace in the hole at risk. It's like, so, uh, the fact we might have starved to death meant nothing to you? <laughs> yeah, we're going to have some, t- we're going to have a long talk, young buffalo. <laughs> well, after 16 grueling hours later, Rainbow Dash says, so, so, so cold up there, the, uh, the air up there is so thin, mountain goats are so rude, how do you even beat me? I flew over the top speed, <laughs> and uh, Strongheart's answer here is just priceless. There's a cavern under the mountain, traditional buffer water slide. <laughs> Yay, water slide! <laughs> <laughs> this cracks me up. Like, I could just imagine Strongheart says this, and we can get Pinkie Pie at the corner doing the. Okay, Pinkie would be in the on the water slide, literally split. I know, <laughs> multiple times, to be exact, for like sixteen hours. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, and Rainbow, like Rainbow Dash, face here is priceless. <laughs> I just like this one. I, I don't know. I mean, it's a mean joke to do. I know, I know. Like, it's a mean joke for a little strong heart to do to Rainbow. But at the same time, Rainbow's, Rainbow didn't listen. 
Well, I'm not a big, I, I can't always agree with uh, the ends justifying the means on punishing someone. But it is a good joke in a moment where Rainbow gets fed just a little bit of humble pie. Yep. You could say that she ate crow. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, and well, <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, over here, this part here, this part here is where they need Rainbow Dash for one good reason. And that is her top speed to get up to the crow's nest. Long story short, the crow is at the peak of the rock formation. A uh, little strong heart says that even I can't get up there by climbing. It's too dangerous for me. So uh, if you could, please, Rainbow, whoop. Before she could explain, Rainbow Dash gets the message and blasts right off. Even at top speed, this structure is really, really high. Well, yeah, Rainbow has to stop to catch her breath. And this is not a pony who likes taking breaks. Mm-hmm. She is pure endurance. True, but at the same time, too, the higher you go, the thinner the air is and the harder it is for you to breathe and cool and whatnot. That's true, but at the, but uh, it's a testament just that Rainbow has to take a break. True, true. And, well, after reaching the peak, we are greeted with the crow. The crow. And Rainbow Dash lands and, oh, she forgets. Sorry, um, oh. She discovers that she don't have the necklace and startles the crow. Oh no, the crow furls her wing with her black and red eyes looking down on Rainbow. Oh, is the crow going to peck her to death? This is a My Little Pony comic, so no. So Rainbow Dash just explains that, well, she's the Pegasus from Crowdale and I'm here to help the buffalo because stuff and I actually forgot to bring the tribute it's somewhere and uh, I messed up so, uh, what do I do and the crow nicely asks well all I ask is a uh, hair from your lovely rainbow mane and that's it that's it And but she whispers it because well apparently time has not uh, time has not been able to heal her throat she gave up everything on that journey that is true. That is one really, really huge sacrifice. And I, I, I just like the look on the crow here. Like, her eyes are red. Like, they're menacing. But at the point where she whispers it, like, oh, I'm a really nice girl. Like, you guys just need to get to know me. After uh, giving the mane and receiving the feathers, they, well, uh, they head off back to the village. And at the same time, Rainbow Dash and Little Strongheart talks about... Celestia. Yeah, (laughs) Celestia of all things. Uh, Also tradition, right? No? A combination of both. Basically, (laughs) uh, Rainbow says, you know, I could have just called up Celestia to fix this, which, again, we we hit that that weird dynamic of of mythology and magic in this show. How can Aoi Zotal control the sun when that's Celestia's domain? Uh, Why... Why is there a, a ceremony to bring fire from the sun when you have a alicorn princess who can do it for you? And basically, Strongheart just knows that tradition is part of an identity. Mm-hmm, and practicing, she, she flat out says, we're not savages, we're not primitives, but we like to do things a certain way. And the final page is a very strong testament to the beauty that comes from just taking things a little slower and doing things, not with rigidity, but with a certain respect. Yeah, and that's the thing about this comic. Like, um, before I go on with my point, um, I just need to point out that the way that little Strongheart is talking about, you know the bring, uh, you know the Daybringer, like. She's just astonished, like she doesn't know Celestia. And as a reader, you reading this. You believe uh, her until she gets to the point where, oh, we know that rainbow. We're not primitive. We just like to do things our way. I was <laughs> like, what? <laughs> You've just been playing Rainbow Dash all along, haven't you? <laughs> you sneaky, sneaky little buffalo, you. She's just like, yeah, we were just messing with you. This is actually a buffalo hazing ritual. <laughs> <laughs> I-, I could just imagine uh, them saying, ha, ah, we purposely teach Rainbow Dash the wrong thing as a joke. <laughs> Ah, my my face to your foot style. <laughs> yes. Oh, 
Kung Pao reference. Yes. <laughs> but anywho. Uh, my, my... Is, no, no one's trying to be all serious now. <laughs> we just made a Kung Pao reference. <laughs> wee you, wee you, wee you, wee you. I know. But anyway, um, the, the, the point I was trying to make is that this book strikes that nice balance between explaining tradition to someone who doesn't really have a tradition. And trying to explain that to someone is really, really difficult. And it's hard to be on the same page. It's, how do I put this? Like, certain traditions that you guys have, we don't. And certain traditions we have, you don't. And to get that across, it's really hard because probably we don't have any common ground to, well, agree upon or to take examples of. And in this comic, they struck that nice balance between Rainbow Dash being the ignorant one while Littlefoot trying to explain things to Rainbow Dash. And to me, it works. Like this, the, the way that they do it here with the amazing art by Sarah is really, really good. It, it is beautiful. I, I so adore the artwork in this, but I, I think we skipped one element oh. of, uh, of this story. There's the question of, well, I mentioned that Rainbow and Little Strongheart together match the discipline of the Rainbow Crow. Mm-hmm. Uh, one go, one wants to do things methodically, but might be going too slow for her own good. Another wants to get things done quickly, but that can actually sabotage her in the long run. And so they counterbalance one another. But at the very end, you think, well, hang on, Rainbow gave up not really a, a sacrifice, just a strand of hair, but it is symbolic. What did Little Strongheart give up? And the answer is, in my eyes, she gave up the need to be in control. She basically, at that very end, even though this is her people riding on this, she's like, I got to turn this over to you, Rainbow. This is in your hooves now. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of hard to trust someone, especially if they've been openly disrespectful of your customs. True that, true that. And especially with the current situation of how Rainbow Dash has been acting. And could you just imagine if Littlefoot was there with Rainbow while she revealed that she doesn't have the necklace anymore? Oh my god, that would have... Well, the phrase would be table flip rage. Oh yes, she would... uh, Strongheart would probably just head smack herself, then head smack Rainbow, then double smack them both. (laughs) Yep. But luckily enough, we didn't get that because that would have caused more drama than we really need. And... The story is good enough. The story is good enough. And yeah, having Little Hearts sacrifice or give control up to Rainbow. And this is a very important thing, a very important tradition for them because they need the warmth, they need the fire to usher a new spring. Technically, Celestia could do it, but this is tradition for the buffaloes. Plus, they would, they just want to mess with Rainbow Dash. There we go. Buffaloes are trolls. <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't say that, but, uh, in the end, we, we got an awesome art. We understand the tradition now. And yeah, it, it's tradition. It's, it's hard to justify certain things. Like, why do they do this the long way? Why, why don't they just ask Celestia for help? And in all honesty, tradition. And also, I think our Celestia appreciates the, uh, not getting bothered by this kind of thing. And, ah, when she sees the burning Aurora Borealis, oh, she knows, ah, ah, I think I'm signaled to, uh, bring down the heat a bit. Alright, let me do so. Although, it could also be, uh, so tell us, has the Daybinger been kidnapped recently? <laughs> uh, so, well, uh, uh yes. <laughs> Oh, bother. I guess we'll have to do, we'll have to do it the old fashioned way. Oh, uh, what way is that? Get the feathers. <laughs> oh, boys. <clears throat> oh, I'm, I'm harsh on Celestia. But only because I feel like she's getting the raw deal. True that. But still, but still, we reached the end and I think, well, final thoughts are in order. Silver, my friend. Well, like I say, this is indeed in my top five. It's a beautiful combination of story, arts, characterization, themes, morals. Uh, just an enjoyable story all around and one of the strongest in Friends Forever, which I am sad that is coming to an end, but hey, all good things. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'd highly recommend it to anyone. I think it's a great introduction if if people are just getting on board with the comics. Mm-hmm. I think longstanding folks will appreciate it. And it's um it's actually a more positive showing for the Buffaloes than uh than over a barrel. And we've not really gotten to see them a lot since then. Background appearances, minor cameos, but nothing truly substantial. True. And well, I would agree to a point because there's a description where Rainbow Dash tells uh little strong heart that Apple Bloom has a cutie mark too, and it's a shield with an apple inside, blah, blah, blah. So that could be a minor spoiler for newbies who want to learn or read more about the Buffaloes. Well, I don't, I don't know if that, well, I guess there's a spoiler if you're watching the show. But honestly, if at this point, I think if you don't know that spoiler, yeah, sorry, just bad timing. Bad timing, old sports. Yeah, but st- <laughs> yes, yes, quite, quite bad timing. <laughs> But, but still, um, awesome book, awesome book. Is that also? Uh, I think that's about it for me. I mean, it's, it's funny. I could go on at length about the beauty of the artwork, the characterization. Oh, yes. And of course, this is a Tony Fleeks comic. Ergo, you can play a game of Spot the Gremlin. Oh, yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the g- Gremlin in the, uh, panel where they were running away from the snakes and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a pink elephant with blonde, uh, hair. I do wonder if perhaps Rainbow and Little Strongheart were passing along the peace pipe a little bit too much. <laughs> I highly doubt it, but why? Why was there a pink elephant? I don't know! Uh, I'm still trying to figure out that in Dumbo. <laughs> why pink elephants? Uh, anyway, as for me, I highly enjoy reading this uh, book again. And the artwork from Tony Fleece and Sarah Richards is just too good. And yeah, not to mention that um, the writer for this book, he, um, let me double check who's the guy's name. Um, Tony Fleece. Yeah, believe. Tony Fleece. Yep, he wrote. Huh. He wrote his own story here and did a marvelous I job. Know. And you know what? Uh, wrote and art by him. This is not bad. It's rare to see a writer doing his own art and vice versa. The first one before this was the Twilight Micro, and that one was. Good story, art is, well, we had high expectations for what it could have been. That's all I can say. We have high hopes. But uh, well, where, where do I go from here on? Yeah, uh, art is good, writing is good, and the jokes in here were okay. They're not too mean, and I say they struck a nice balance. Would you agree? I very much yeah, so. Yeah. But anywho, uh, those are my thoughts. And well, next week, uh, next week, what are we going to review? Um, well, Silver, I'm not sure if you know what we're going to do, but next week we're going to do something new, something that we have never done before. But that's not tradition. Well, we're starting a new tradition, and that is a Patreon-sponsored video. As you guys may know that we have a Patreon, and for five bucks, you get to decide what we are going to talk about. And well, you guys heard and you guys acted. And Nim Drogatorius has asked us to, well, talk about the main six and ask if their character arc is over. And well, we'll hop right to that thing next and talk about it because that is a really, really good topic. And, well, um, if you guys would like to support the show, that is at patreon.com slash the MBS show. Um, go check it out. And, well, we're going to end this one and hop right to the next one. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Zisir Vakril. And we'll guys see you next week with more amazing episodes of the show. See ya. Adios. So whatever happened to the tradition of cuddle socks? Did we drop that one or should we continue on with that one? That tradition sort of went by the wayside. Mm-hmm.